Balanchine showed a real old-fashioned reverence for women's mystique, but he refused to go below the surface and find out what we're really like. The opposite is true of British choreographer Kenneth Macmillan. He was fascinated by real rather than fictional personalities. They're often historical characters like Anastasia, the daughter of the last Russian Tsar, and Mary Vetsera, the mistress of Crown Prince Rudolf in his ballet Myling. Even when they're fabricated, they're women that we women recognize. For the first time, it seems to me, a choreographer was delving deep into a woman's psyche and exploring the underside of femininity. It's often said that Petipa, Ashton, and Balanchine loved women, but I think loving someone means accepting every bit of them, every trait, unattractive or not, of their personality. It's easy to love a perfect woman. Try loving one with a few flaws, like the character I'm about to play. We're rehearsing Macmillan's 1960 ballet, The Invitation, and I play an older woman, past her prime, frustrated in a loveless marriage. This is no fairy tale princess. In fact, this woman seeks revenge on her husband and satisfies her sexual appetite by seducing a young boy, played here by Adam. Okay. Lynn Seymour is once again acting as another pair of eyes on our rehearsal. She knows Macmillan's intentions because the other lead role in the ballet was created on her. As in The Two Pigeons, she played a young girl, but instead of Ashton's happy ending, Macmillan choreographed a graphic rape scene which took ballet into a new era. Same again, thanks, Donald. And... Macmillan makes free with classical technique, adapting and distorting it so that every move tells a story. Frock. His choreography is not sweet and pretty, but realistic and dramatic. Keep profile. <laughs> very, very, very interesting. I could tell something was going to happen coming down. She, she looked a bit far away from you. It's because I was pushing her away because she was strangling oh, you. me. <laughs> It seems bizarre that The Invitation and The Two Pigeons were created at the same time. They're both period pieces, but Two Pigeons looks back to the sexual politics of the 50s, whereas The Invitation foreshadows the sexual liberation of the late 60s. We need to see this hand more. Let's start, make big things. Actually, this is now, I'm now going to touch this great body. <laughs> Sorry, you've only got mine today. So, so, so you, you, you've, you've done this one, and now, don't go from here, it's like you start again. This one's going down, but this one's doing the same thing, you know? As you go down. It's quite raunchy, isn't it? But yes, we felt we were being very daring then. Mm.
After plumbing the emotional depths of Macmillan, an abstract ballet, like Hermann Schmermann, presents a very different challenge. I'm dealing with a melting pot of dance styles. The torso is no longer always upright. The pelvis has an independent existence, and the feet are often turned in. The ballet technique hasn't disappeared. It's just reversed, fragmented, and turned inside out. It may look carefree and relaxed, but don't be fooled. It isn't. The choreographer is William Forsyth, an American who directs his own company in Frankfurt. His choreography pushes dancers to the edge. Wobbling during the balances in The Sleeping Beauty can hurt your pride. Misjudging one of Forsyth's lifts and throws can lead to real physical damage. I first worked with William Forsyth about six years ago. Immediately, I knew this was something different. He seems to pick out dancers because of their individual qualities, regardless of gender. He's also the first choreographer I've met who insists that my partner learns my steps as well as his own to make sure he's got a really clear idea of just what kind of support I need. I thought this was a great idea. For me, William Forsyth was a revelation. While some choreographers helpfully modify steps for the weaker sex, Forsyth is just as likely to give the tough steps and the control to the woman and the delicate, poetic bits to the man. Whoops! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I think I was a bit late. You're supposed to do what I tell you, Adam. <laughs> when I clap, you're supposed to come running. <laughs> in your I'm, dreams. No, no, no. I'm in charge this time. Let's just try that thing around the neck, actually. Okay. Come here. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. In Hermann Schmermann, as in all Forsyth ballets, it's a great relief to dance as myself, without artifice or pretense. I'm an equal on stage with the men, standing, or falling, by my own merits. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> I think it's a combination of things. It's a bit slippy, but... Sorry, that's always a... You're just taking it to the extremes again, Deb. Oh. Actually, that's the thing about it, isn't it? It's letting it go as far as you can and then just yeah. pulling it back. Yeah, no, what's really nice is it's not like balance sheet where the man, you, is putting me off yeah. balance. It's you like I decision. say to you, I'm going off, I'm going off balance me. and you catch me, like, you know, this bit. I just almost don't bother yeah. for my... <laughs> you know, it's, it's like my, my game, my shot, my, my call, really, isn't it? Talking of which... Yeah, drink. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Forsyth famously breaks the rules of classical ballet, including the dress code. I still wear my point shoes, but I leave my tights in the dressing room. Uh, yeah. After you. Oh, thanks.
I'm curious to know what direction ballet will take when women choreographers finally step into the spotlight. Perhaps then we can get gender taken off the agenda. Ironically, it was extraordinary women like Mary Rombert and Ninette de Valois who put ballet on the map in this country. Dame Ninette, who's now turned 100, founded the Royal Ballet from a standing start, yet she still wrote, the real history of ballet has been a history of great male choreographers, directors, and teachers. Dame Ninette, like that other formidable female, Mrs. Thatcher, never really promoted any other women to her inner circle. She even said that once ballet was established in this country, its development should pass into the care of the mature male element. Hmm. As far as costume's concerned, ballet's gone from one extreme to the other. Sleeping Beauty involves at least an hour of dressing up. To dance Forsyth, you dress down. A pocket-sized piece of lycra is a lot easier to live with than a tutu. But unfortunately, attitudes don't change as quickly as costumes. But I live in hope. Ballet has traditionally dillied and dallied about 20 years behind the rest of the world. Sometime in the not-too-distant future, we'll start to see ballerinas created by women choreographers. Women through women's eyes. And of course, that means we'll get to see men through women's eyes too. Dance on.